Hello and welcome everybody to this week's episode of Cooking Connected. My name is Sajwa and I'm joined today with my coworker, Jordan. Hi everyone. And today we're going to be doing a really fun recipe today. I'm really looking forward to that. Before we get started though, I just want to review what a normal Cooking Matters class looks like. A normal Cooking Matters class is a six week nutrition based cooking class and we meet once a week for two hours. <laughs> um, so during those classes, we'll have a nutrition educator and a chef and they work together in collaboration and we'll do a recipe uh, demonstration. We'll learn a little bit of nutrition related to that recipe. And it's a really great way to just expand on your cooking knowledge. Um, so today our chef is going to be Jordan and I'll be our nutrition educator. But before we get started, I do want to ask you guys again if you would be willing to take our survey for us. I have our survey code for this week right here. Make sure that's in view. There we go. Okay. So the survey code for this week's episode of Cooking Connected with Cooking Matters Minnesota and the University of Minnesota is going to be E0971. One nine, And again, that's our program code for this week's episode of Cooking Matters, Cooking Connected. All right, I think we're ready to get started with our recipe, Jordan. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, for those of you, this is our first time joining us. Welcome. Um, so this was actually a recipe that was requested by one of our viewers on Facebook. So thank you for that request. Um, we really, really love requests. So please, if you have a request, let us know on Facebook, give us um, a comment below. We really appreciate that. So today we are making, um, a, you might've seen on Sajwa's sign, noodles, zoodles and squash, oh my. So <laughs> we're gonna be learning how to make um, zucchini noodles, spaghetti squash, and then we're also gonna learn how to make just a quick tomato sauce for your spaghetti. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna switch my view real quick. All right. So I really look forward to this recipe. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm really excited for this one. So as always, as you can see, I've got my mise en place, my mess in place. I've got all of my ingredients laid out. But the first thing you always do when you're cooking, of course, is washing your hands. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and wash our hands for 20 seconds, getting all those surfaces with hot soapy water. You can sing the ABCs, happy birthday if you're um, uh, cooking with your kids today. So we've got our hands washed and our counters also need to be sanitized. So food safety is very important. Just go ahead and uh, wash your counters before you start cooking. It's always a good idea. So. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our spaghetti squash. So the first thing that you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna get this big round squash here. And I've already cut mine in half, as you can see, but um, you have this big squash and the first thing you're gonna do is wash it. Um, all of our vegetables have been rinsed, but um, when you're cutting big things like melons or squash, it's always important, even if you're not eating this outside, if you're gonna be cutting into it, you're, you're cutting the bacteria into the flesh of the um, item. So just making sure that we're rinsing those items still. Um, so I went ahead and rinsed this and then I cut it in half. And as you can see, I didn't really do a very good job of cutting it very straight. <laughs> Um, but that's all right. It can be tricky to cut. <laughs> yeah, they are very dense, um, so it, they can be kind of difficult to cut. So when you're cutting it, um, as Sajo likes to say, it roly polyolies around. So <laughs> we just go ahead and cut it. Done. Yep. <laughs> so just make sure when you're cutting this, um, you can create a flat surface on this side just by cutting it down. But um, if you're gonna try to cut it in half, just be really careful. We're using our claw. And then of course we're holding our knife properly by pinching the blade and wrapping our fingers around. So I just cut straight down here. And as you can see, it's already sliding on me. <laughs> so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take out all of these seeds. This is kind of a messy part of this, but that's all right. Just a quick note um, for you guys when you're cutting your squash or any type of rooty vegetable like this that's really dense and kind of hard to get through. One thing that I like to do is actually to lay a little bit of paper towel down on my cutting board um, just to get a little bit of grip 
um, and that kind of helps so it's not moving around or slipping and sliding too much, especially if it's just been um, rinsed off, you're also gonna wanna wipe that down. Um, so yeah, that's just a tip that I use in my kitchen. Um, Jordan, does it matter what kind of squash I choose? Is there a certain kind that I should be looking for? So this squash, um, it will say in the store spaghetti squash, this round, nice one. I don't think, I, I, you know, honestly, I'm not sure if the other squash um, will shred as nicely as this one does. Um, so this one, when you cook it, you're going to go ahead and shred it, and it kind of gets this stringy um, like spaghetti. So okay. that's why they, I'm assuming that's why they call it spaghetti squash. <laughs> so that's why we choose this one. So make sure that you are buying the correct squash. It will say a spaghetti squash usually on the side there, but it's a nice round squash, um, a nice yellow round squash. So, Great. you know, the first thing I always tell you guys that I forget is preheat your oven. <laughs> and of course I did. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, you're going to preheat your oven to 450 or excuse me, 400 today, there you go. So we've already got our seeds out um, and you preheated your oven, hopefully you remembered. Um, the next thing what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead, you've got your nice baking sheet here. You're going to take some oil. I'm using a grapeseed oil again today, um, but you can use olive oil or canola oil and you're just gonna drizzle a little bit on there. And then you're going to take some salt and, of course, sparingly, you're mm -hmm. going to take a little bit of salt and just sprinkle that. I don't know if, yeah, you guys can see that. And we don't want too much salt on this, otherwise it might get not very good. So we've got that all drizzled with olive oil. We sprinkled a little salt in, and then with the cut side down, you're mm -hmm. going to go ahead and flip it down on your baking sheet like this. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and bake this um, at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes is when you're gonna wanna start checking on it. So okay. with spaghetti squash, you don't wanna over bake it. If you do, it's gonna end up being really mushy. Yeah, yeah okay. so it won't really be um, that beautiful, nice uh, spaghetti consistency that we're looking mm -hmm. for. So um, it should be still undercooking it is better than overcooking it. So it should be maybe just a little hard yet. So we're going to go ahead and bake this. We're going to check it about 15 minutes in. And then it may, depending on how big your squash is, you may need to cook it for about 20 to 25. So expect about 25, but hope for 15. So Okay, that's fair. We will throw that in the oven as soon as that is ready. And again, hopefully you remember to preheat your oven. So <laughs> that is spaghetti squash. And as soon as that's baking, done baking, I will show you how to um, make it more of a spaghetti consistency. So then next we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make zucchini noodles. So zucchini mm. noodles are really popular now. Yeah. Um, I've seen them at Panera a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. um, they're a great all company. Yeah. yeah. They are so good. I really love them. Um, so you can see I've already got some cut up here and when you're looking online for zucchini noodles, you can see a lot of times that people require these fancy gadgets like they're called spiralizers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have one of those so I hadn't made a whole lot of zucchini noodles then I figured out how to do it by hand. So <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take your rinsed zucchini and you're going to chop off each side. And then what you actually can do, I've got my scraps here for my broth bag. Um, you're gonna chop down the middle, because again, this is rolling around. Oh, holy, holy. Exactly. <laughs> so really you can do this flat a few different there. ways. Um, let's see here. You can do this a couple different ways. Um, the way that I actually prefer is to use a, um, grit or a slicer like this. Yeah peeler. There it is. <laughs> and you're just going to go ahead and peel these into thin slices. Yeah, that's the way I do it. Yeah. So this is a really nice way to do this. Um, if you don't have a peeler like this, you can actually just go ahead and cut it. Um, I would suggest using a peeler just because you can't get that beautiful thin slice that you're needing. And that's really what's going to make it 
um, you know, more of a spaghetti consistency. Yeah. But um, another way that you can actually do this is you can um, take a grater, a box grater, and I just saw this um, this morning actually online. Using the biggest holes on the box grater there, you're just going to slide the zucchini down on this, um, and it should create some pretty much some pretty long slices. So we're getting some right there, as you can see. So that works as well. So you have a couple of different options. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the um, slicer here today, and this will just take me a few minutes. Yeah, could be. And I, I really like that this uses just like everyday household tools. You're right, when we come across a new recipe like zucchini noodles and you're telling me to go out and get all these fancy gadgets it can be a little daunting and you know as a beginner chef that might be a little scary to get started in that way but this is so simple and so easy i can definitely do this one in my kitchen absolutely and we don't really want to spend money on something that we don't really know if we like yet so yeah great point, um, great point. the next thing you're gonna go ahead we've got all of these nice beautiful thin slices here you're gonna stack them on top of each other. And then using knife safety, of course, we're gonna go ahead and use our claw and just create really thin slices. So, these nice little thin strips. And of course you can choose how big you want these. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna show you how um, I like to cook these uh, I like to saute them, but you can actually do a lot of different things. You can boil these if you'd like. Um, just keep in mind if you're boiling them, you are going to be losing some of the vitamins in the water. So, yeah. continue cutting. You can also bake these, um, but what we're going to show you today is actually to saute them. That is definitely my favorite. And of course, you can always eat them raw too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they go really beautiful actually on top of a salad. So we got some funny ones there. We'll to the side. Those look really good, Jordan. They are. I really love um, zucchini noodles. Every time I go to Panera. Um, <laughs> oh, there we are finally. Um, I always try to do the zucchini noodles. So let's go ahead and throw our spaghetti squash in. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. So with zucchini noodles, um, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to saute these super quick. So I just like to heat them up and I like to add a little bit of garlic. Um, as you guys know, I love garlic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and throw a little bit of oil in our pan. And I'm just going to show you real quick an easy, simple lunch that you can make. Um, Kind of on the fly. If you have your zucchini noodles prepped like that, uh, you know, you'll just be able to create this meal super quick. So just threw in about a tablespoon of oil here. And next I'm going to throw in some garlic. This heats up pretty quickly for me. And then we're just going to go ahead and throw in some of our zucchini noodles. Oof, yum. Makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I see Jordan is going to be sauteing her zucchini noodles today. But while she's doing that, I wanted to chat with you guys about some other methods of preparation for vegetables that you might want to consider as you um, begin introducing new and more varieties of vegetables into your diet. Um, of course, there's always the regular old raw that's good and fine and dandy to do. Um, I like eating raw vegetables first and foremost because they're convenient. They're already ready to go. All you have to do is rinse them and and run with it. So raw, you can do them steamed. I love doing steamed vegetables. Um, if I'm working with frozen, even if I have fresh ones and I wanna kind of get a little cook on them. I really like steaming because you're still applying that heat, but unlike boiling, like Jordan mentioned earlier, you're not um, losing the nutrients in that water. So that's something to consider um, when we're thinking of 
prep cooking methods. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hold on. Interrupt us here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yes, that and you're done already? Yeah, so there's so I thought I had more time to, t to do some nutrition, but look oh, how quick that was, you guys. Don't worry. We will have more time when we make <laughs> our uh, tomato sauce. That's so, awesome. This is so quick. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put some Parmesan on top. Um, but I just wanted to quickly mention, don't cook them too much. They will get mushy on you. Right. So just a quick saute, and that's all you need. Right, because you do want to retain that little crunch kind of um, that they have. And, you know, they are vegetables, so they can get smushy really quick. Absolutely. Yep. So let me just make this look pretty over here. So yeah, I guess we will hold off on finishing our conversation while we, wow, that looks amazing, Jordan, wow. So they are so good, so quick, and honestly, it's a great alternative to just some pasta. Um, so just right. sprinkling a little bit mm. of cheese right on top there, and you've got lunch. <laughs> Here we go, yep. Yep, so this is um, as easy as it gets with uh, spaghetti, so we've got one dish done. On to the next. <laughs> um, so real quick, I am just also going to show you, um, we have a nice swap out here of our um, cooked spaghetti squash. Right. So it is um, just a little bit dense still. So we'll see how I did. So you're just going to use your fork and just kind of flake it on the side here. Okay. And look at how that's like kind of peeling. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like peeling right apart. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, it must be called spaghetti squash for this reason. <laughs> it must be. <laughs> so I, I've cooked butternut squash before, and it doesn't really flake. It doesn't really do that nice spaghetti like this one does. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just going to continue doing this. And with the other one, you'll go ahead and do that too. Um, but you'll just go ahead and kind of flake it through. And like I said, don't cook it too much, otherwise you're going to get really mushy. Right. And then we've got all this beautiful spaghetti that you can take out. Um, wow. Oh. And there is another alternative that you can use mm -hmm. um, for spaghetti night. <laughs> if you don't want like pasta, maybe you're gluten-free um, celiacs yeah. or something like that you know, you can use vegetables for your alternative. So we've got tons of pasta in there. Oh, that's and awesome. Here's just a little bit of extra that we're seeing. Yeah. I love, they look just like little baby spaghetti noodles. And even like the color, I would have never, <laughs> you could easily trick someone. <laughs> yeah. So with a nice topping on there, we're just going to quickly show you a lot of people buy canned um, like spaghetti sauce mm -hmm. and it can really, um, you know, it's not very, it has a lot of additives in it and a lot of sugar, actually. Mm. Um, so you can really avoid that by making your own. And it is so, so simple. And you can add a lot of other vegetables on top of what you're already eating if you're making a spaghetti squash or a zucchini noodle. So we're just going to quickly make a tomato sauce. Um, so we're going to be um, using onion, garlic, and then a carrot, actually, again, um, I had mentioned a few videos ago that you can add a carrot into your spaghetti just to add a little bit more vegetable. Okay. So today I'm going to go ahead. All about the vegetable. <laughs> yeah, all these vegetables today. <laughs> yep. So um, I'm going to go ahead and quickly chop my onion. Um, and I know you guys know how to do this because we've showed these in the last few videos. So just go ahead and. So we chopped off the end and chopped off this little fuzzy part. Save these for our broth bag. Mm -hmm. So we saw Jordan using her claw. She was gripping her bla the blade of the knife by the handle. I mean, <laughs> gripping the knife <laughs> by the blade <laughs> and wrapping her fingers around the handle. Um, we saw her making a flat surface with this item. And now she's just peeling off the skin. Just as a quick recap. <laughs> Thank you. And then we're going to go ahead and use the lines, the natural lines that are on our mm -hmm. onion here. And I love that tip. Oh my goodness. It makes dicing an onion so much quicker. And That's when you're in that state where your te tears are overflowing, you want to move kind of quick. So absolutely. Yeah. So let's see here. 
I'm going to want kind of a smaller dice for my spaghetti. Um, of course, you can use a pretty big chunk if you like onions and you just want to taste that onion in there. But I'm just going to do a really fine dice. Lay that down. And of course, if you really wanted, and I've done this before, I've actually kind of minced these a little bit. They do get a little mushy, but if you do a nice fine dice, that'll be about perfect. Of course, it's all up to your preference. Great. So we just chopped them, let's see here. The recipe calls for one medium onion. And this is actually a Cooking Matters recipe um, for tomato sauce. Oh, I've had this recipe before. It is awesome. Yeah. I am gonna make a little bit of deviations here um, and go ahead and, uh, the recipe calls for basil and oregano for our seasoning. I'm just gonna go ahead and actually use Italian seasoning instead. Mm. Nice. I mean, Italian seasoning has all those in ingredients in there already, right? Absolutely. Yep. So, yeah. All right. And then we've got our carrots. We're going to go ahead. It says to add one medium carrot. I just had two small ones. So I'm going to quickly just use a box grater. Be careful when you guys are using box graters, watching the hand that's doing the um, scraping. Making sure you're moving back as you go because it sucks to get, you know, scraped right there on your fingers. Oh. This is a great way to add extra um, vitamins into your spaghetti. Um, sometimes I actually like to add some bell peppers mm -hmm. in mine. Um, I've had extra bell pepper and I just go ahead and throw that in there. I've added a lot of different vegetables to my spaghetti mix. And I like that with this box grating method of the carrot, it makes it so small. And once you mix it into the sauce, you probably won't even be able to tell, you know? Like sneaking extra vegetables in there. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be good for kids, I think. Um, maybe children who are a little nervous around vegetables still. Um, this might be a great way to kind of introduce the, that to them slowly but surely and in a form that they're familiar with, you know, in a spaghetti sauce. Yeah. And like Sajra was saying, it just kind of melts in there for you, mm -hmm. which is awesome. So we went ahead and we diced our onions, we shredded our carrot, and then um, I have some pre-minced garlic here that I minced earlier, and that's about four cloves of garlic. So over um, our medium heat here, there we go. Make sure we got it started. Nope. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to heat some oil and then we're going to add the onion and garlic and carrot just to soften it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit of oil, about roughly one tablespoon of oil. And we'll just go ahead and let that heat up a little bit. Go ahead and add all of my ingredients here. These will just cooking. take a few minutes to saute. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and add our um, tomato sauce or our uh, crushed tomatoes and let that simmer. Okay. So while Jordan's sauteing that, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish talking a little bit about the vegetables that I was explaining earlier and methods of cooking. Um, so we've already covered sauteing, we've covered eating raw, eating steamed. Another option for eating vegetables would be roasted. Um, you can also try stir frying. We have an awesome stir fry recipe as well as a pasta with roasted vegetable recipe. So you're seeing the different ways that you can cook those um, items. And then finally, you can grill them. Um, I really enjoy some grilled asparagus at a barbecue. Um, that's a lot of fun and it's just a great way to add extra, um, you know, variety to the vegetables you're eating. So when we're eating our vegetables, um, today I'm having my little my plate here. Today we've been really focusing in on these veggies, right? And when we're following our my plate recommendations, we want to make sure that we're making half of our plate fruits and vegetables. So you could see that there and with recipes like the zucchini noodles and the squash noodles, those are really great ways and easy ways that you can make sure that 
half of your plate is fruits and vegetables. Um, so if you were to do the, that noodle recipe, um, maybe you could do like the cheese on top would be a dairy. Um, we could think about a protein option, like a lean meat. You could do a chicken, you could do a seafood option. You could maybe try some beans, maybe pinto beans or um, garbanzo beans. Rather, those would be great options that you could include on the side. Um, and for fruits, you know, you could have an apple or something on the side, especially if this is going to be a lunch option. So think about ways that when you are making recipes that you're hitting all of the components of my plate. Um, sometimes for me, it can be a little challenging making sure that I'm hitting all of them. So keep that in mind. Oh, don't want to forget the grains either. I'm making half of those grains whole grains. Um, so yes, keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to our vegetables, I do want to quickly review the my plate recommendations for um, for the amount of vegetables and how much you need. So as you guys can see here, I have it for children, girls, boys, and then women and men. So we have the my plate recommendation. So for the ages of two to three, about one cup of vegetables is good daily. Um, four to eight, one and a half. And it, it kind of as, um, goes up <clears throat> in half cup increments like that, especially with the children. So we're seeing girls ages nine to 13, two cups would be ideal. Um, girls ages 14 to 18, two and a half cups. For boys, 19, nine to 13, <laughs> not 19, nine to 13, we're seeing two and a half cups. And then boys, 14 to 18, three cups. So it um, seems like with the girls, it's just a half cup under the boys. But you know what? We're not going to make this about gender. Let's go ahead and get those uh, that extra half cup, ladies. Go ahead. <laughs> Toss that in your plate. Um, for women, we're looking at two and a half cups of vegetables a day. Um, and that would be between the ages of 19 and 50. And for gentlemen in that age range, they're recommending three cups. Um, and then for those who are 50 plus, we're looking at two cups for women and two and a half for men. So, you know, make sure that you're at least getting that amount that is not a limit, but a minimum. <laughs> and it's always okay to eat over that if that's what you're able to do that day. Um, I really encourage eating vegetables. I feel like I could, you, you can, there's always room to eat more, you know? Um, they're kind of like the ignored ones. I feel like we're always eating fruits because they're nice and sweet, but vegetables get bad, bad slack. And I hate that. <laughs> um, so I do want to, are you, how's the sauce going, Jordan? We are doing good. So I just went ahead and um, added our, so we had everything sauteed, or we sauteed everything, uh, just made them a little bit softer. Mm -hmm. And then I added my crushed tomatoes. So today I'm just using a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And we just go ahead and throw all of that in there. And then I added a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I really like um, a little bit more spice in my um, sauces. Yeah. And then um, some salt and pepper. And what we're going to do is we just went ahead and um, we're heating this now, but we're going to let it simmer. Um, if you let it simmer for a little while, it will, uh, those, all those flavors will kind of incorporate together mm -hmm. and it'll make your sauce really pop. So we've got that beautiful sauce. Um, we've got some beautiful spaghetti squash and some beautiful zucchini noodles. So we made a lot today, got a lot done. <laughs> so I will just go ahead and add this as a topping and um, you've got lunch and dinner already made. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. And this is a great way. I love that we did the spaghetti noodles and the zucchini noodles today. Those are great ways, again, to boost up your intake of vegetables, um, you know, making sure that we're meeting those um, recommendations for my plate daily. Um, so featuring vegetables as main dishes instead of just sides. I really like doing that. Um, and that's what we did today. So absolutely. I did want to also mention I saw a recipe this morning that um, people were using spaghetti squash instead of hash browns in the morning. Mm. So if you, uh, you can probably cook them a little bit more, make them a little more crunchy if you saute these, if you like your hash browns kind of crunchy. Mm -hmm. But this would be awesome with an egg on top. I'm definitely yeah. going to give that a try. Yeah. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have not heard of that one before. So that's actually, that's really cool. Yeah, so. 
but that is zucchini noodles and spaghetti squash and cooking matters nice tomato sauce here so all right so you guys there you have it um this was our episode of cooking connected today it was all about noodles <laughs> and vegetable noodle options I want to thank you guys for joining us for this episode of Cooking Connected. I thank all of you for your love and support via Facebook, via comments, via live chat. We really appreciate that engagement. We also want to give a shout out to all of you guys who have been taking our surveys. Um, this has been helping us continue to grow, grow our YouTube channel, grow our video content, and make content that's relevant to you guys in your lives. Um, if you don't mind, we'd appreciate if you take the survey for today's episode of Cooking Connected. Um, again, this is with the University of Minnesota Extension and Cooking Matters Minnesota. And our survey, our program code for this episode is E zero nine seven one one nine and that's gonna be for this noodles zoodles and squash oh my episode <laughs> <laughs> i cannot get enough of that title that's so awesome but um thank you jordan for going ahead and showing us how to prepare this i learned so much i mean i've done zucchini noodles before but this is just yeah this is awesome appreciate <laughs> that no problem. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope to see you again next week. Again, please leave comments for what recipes you want to see next. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Take care and have a great day. Yeah.